Welcome to another Algolab lesson. Today we will look at the most important thing that separates random strategies from those that can really work in real trading. We will discuss robustness. Let's start with a quick disclaimer. Everything you see in this lesson is intended solely for studying how to work with strategy quant. It is not investment advice. Why do we test the quality of strategies? Backtesting is a great start, but it's not enough. It only shows us how the strategy responded to specific historical data, data that we already know. But the market changes, new cycles, new volatility and new situations. That is why we test the quality of strategies to verify that they can withstand conditions they have never ever encountered before. Robustness tests help us identify which strategies are just nice theory and which have a solid foundation and can work in the real world. A backtest is the first thing every trader does. They take the rules of the strategy and test them on historical data. We get an equity curve that often looks beautiful, regular growth, low drawdown, stable results. But here comes the trap. Shortly after being deployed, the strategy starts working. We test the quality of strategies to eliminate that chance. Many strategies only work on a narrow range of data or in one specific period. And until we expose the strategy to various market conditions, we cannot know if it really works. So robustness tests are our safety net. They help separate strategies that have succeeded only by chance from those that have solid logic and can survive outside their ideal scenario. Every good trader knows that the goal is not a strategy that was perfect in the past, the goal is a strategy that can survive the future, which will always be different from history. And that is why quality testing is so, so important. To do this, we use the following robustness test. Out of sample, test on a different data structure, Monte Carlo analysis, walk forward metrics, strategy parameter permutation, optimization profile and tests on other markets, among others. Robustness tests give us the answer to a fundamental question. Is the strategy really strong or does it just look good on a chart? Robustness tests are our stress tests. They reveal the weak points of a strategy before the real market does. They show us whether a strategy has a solid foundation or whether it will collapse under the first condition. We don't use a random process to find such strategies, but we have a systematic development process, a workflow. This process includes a whole set of fillers and tests that the strategy must pass. Thanks to this, we know that what remains at the end is not a coincidence, but quality. We use this set of tests in our custom project. First, we build a strategy on an in-sample and out-of-sample period, followed by tests on other markets. Then we test the strategy on a different time frame. We also test sensitivity to fees and slippage, and finally, as part of the custom project, we use Monte Carlo tests. What are Monte Carlo tests? Monte Carlo testing allows us to see how the strategy behaves when things don't go as they should or ideally. We change the parameters, we simulate chaotic scenarios and see if the strategy holds together, meaning if the parameters are not widely dispersed. A robust strategy can handle large deviations, while a weak one will collapse immediately. Here in the picture, you can see the dispersion of results. Each curve represents one simulation in the backtest. Monte Carlo helps us understand how a strategy might perform in various possible market conditions. In a backtest, we only see a single curve, the best possible history. We start with a backtest that shows a solid profit. At first glance, everything looks great, but as soon as we run Monte Carlo testing, we find that the results begin to diverge. Your original backtest shows a profit of around $3,666, but after running the Monte Carlo simulations with a 95% of confidence level, it shows only about $2,826. This means that there is a 5% chance that the strategy will earn less than $2,000. $826 in real conditions. And suddenly, that beautiful equity from the backtest doesn't look so perfect. What do you think? This is exactly the kind of reality check a trader needs. Theory is great, but we learn the most in practice. 
Now let's move directly to strategy quant and see what these tests actually look like in strategy. We are back in strategy quant and the project we started in the last lesson has finished. When I sort the strategies in the data bank, I have to be in the final data bank. I can see the strategies that have passed all the tests. Since I have tested the strategies on multiple markets, I can view the results in the portfolio data bank. At this point, I don't see a single result, but the results we see here relate to the entire portfolio. We can see that in this section as well. Now I will move the strategies to Retester, where we will continue to work with them. I select all of them and click copy. This will copy them to the clipboard, of course. This way, I can easily move strategies between individual tasks without having to save them to a disk and reload them into the given section. I click on Retester. I delete all the strategies that are currently here and I click on Paste. We have moved the strategies to the Retester where we will continue to work with them manually. Now we have to test the strategies on Monte Carlo simulations, specifically on parameter changes. In order to work with the strategies in the retester, we need to load the settings for the given strategy. We click on the strategy config tab and click on apply. If any instrument values are missing, strategy quant will automatically prompt us to either add the symbol or select another one. At this point, everything went well and I have all the settings we tested with. For now, I remove the slippage and retest the strategy without slippage and on only one market. I sort it by sharp ratio and now filter the strategies by correlation. By building strategies from a template, a side effect is that many strategies are based on the same logic and differ only in parameters or input filters. For now, I filter the strategies and want to filter out all strategies that have a higher correlation according to profit and loss per monthly period and a maximum correlation of 0.5. I filter all strategies that have a higher correlation than 0.5 and I click on the filter button. 143 strategies were removed without having to test them. We are left with strategies that have a correlation lower than 0.5. Now I test the strategies on Monte Carlo simulations. I go to cross check tab and click on Monte Carlo retest methods and set that I want 200 simulations per parameter change with a probability of 20% and a maximum change of 30%. When I click on the filtering tab, I have to set the filtering. Return drawdown ratio, select Monte Carlo Rita simulation, and on the right side, select Return drawdown ratio again. Click Apply percentage ratio, and a comparison will be created. This condition means that we filter all strategies that have equal to or greater than 50% of the original Return drawdown ratio value. We will go back to the backtest and run Monte Carlo simulations on these strategies. The tests are complete and when I saw them by sharp ratio, I see that one strategy did not pass the test. When I look at the details, I see this value. The original value was 5.1, but after the Monte Carlo simulations, it didn't quite work out. Although the result is not entirely bad within the range of all simulations, but the range is relatively large. When we look at this strategy, we see that most of the simulations are close to each other, with only a few simulations where we changed the parameters deviating. All simulations are profitable in some way and have an upward trend. For now, I could discard and delete this strategy. And we will work with these other strategies. When we then run Monte Carlo simulations on Monte Carlo trades manipulation with the same filtering of at least 50% return to down ratio, and randomly skip trades with a probability of 10%. We get this result. And now I will wait a moment for the backtest to run. And we see that this test has passed. We do this test because when the platform goes down and the trade is not entered, we verify how sensitive the strategy is to the result. For now, 
we save these seven strategies to our disk. I save the strategies, mark them, click save, save to file, and save them anywhere on my disk. And we will continue working with these strategies in the following lesson. If you liked the video, give it a like, subscribe, and see you in the next one.